welcome to Simple Class. I um, just want to say thank you for tuning in to us, and I hope you're going to enjoy today's lesson. We miss you guys so much, so, so, so much. We cannot wait to be back together again, but this is pretty great for now. So let's get into our lesson. Um, last week, Miss Angela taught about Stephen and his being killed. He was stoned to death by people as he was preaching about the gospel and they didn't like it. And so they took rocks and threw them at him until he died. And we are so sad about that. One interesting thing about what happened when Stephen was being stoned outside the, the city of Jerusalem, there was a young man who was with the men who were doing the stoning, and he was approving of everything that was happening here to Stephen. He approved of all of it. And that young man is going to be very important for our story now and for our stories coming. And that young man is Saul. He watches the coats of the men as they are busy killing Stephen. So this Saul is going to be very important to the church. At this point, he doesn't even know how important he's going to be because after Stephen is stoned, Saul goes on a rampage and he starts pulling Christians out of their homes and sending them to jail. And he is really, really trying to destroy this new religion and to put it to rest and gone forever. And because he is persecuting and abusing the people of the church, they decide to leave Jerusalem and they are going to scatter and they're going to go everywhere in the region. So the Holy Land are next to the water. Here's Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee, the river, the Dead Sea, and they scatter and they go up to the region of Samaria. They scatter and they go to the region of Judea. Saul is now helping spread the message of the gospel because the people, the Christians who leave Jerusalem, take the message of Jesus with them where they go. So instead of stopping the message of Jesus getting out, he helps it. And Jesus had said when he was ascending into heaven, go and preach and make disciples of every nation. And here we go. We're taking it from Jerusalem to Samaria, Judea. And this is why we in Idaho now know about Jesus, because it starts here. And wherever you're watching from, it doesn't even matter. This is why we all know now, because of what happens here, and it starts to spread. And Jesus did say that was going to happen. So, the apostles stay in Jerusalem, but the others scatter. One of the people who goes away from Jerusalem is a man named Philip. Um, Philip is a special guy. He was one of the seven deacons of the Church of Jerusalem. And so he goes to the region of Samaria, and he preaches the good news of Jesus to all those people who are in Samaria. Not just men, he teaches women too, which is really important because um, it's important that the men and women both are ready because it wasn't just for men, it was for everyone. And the women believed too, and they were, being, they were believing Philip and being baptized. And it was such a wonderful thing that these Samaritans were accepting the word of Christ. Now, Samaria, I don't know if you remember this, people did not like the people of Samaria. The Jews especially hated them because they were part Jew and part something else. And they were disgusted by that. They hated them. They called them horrible names. They called them half-breeds. They called them dogs. 
And not cute little dogs that you want to sit in your lap and you love. Dogs that you hate that get into your garbage and you say, shoot, get away from here, you dog. Those are the kind of dogs they thought about when they said, you are a Samaritan dog. So Phil is preaching the word to these people and they are receiving it. They are so happy to learn about Jesus and that the gospel is for them too. They are not excluded from that anymore. So, one of the people who believes in Samaria is a man whose name is Simon. Before he hears about the good news of Jesus, Simon is a sorcerer, a magician. And he, before Philip came, Simon was the one who was doing amazing things for the people. So Philip is performing signs and wonders and miracles. And the people are amazed because of what Philip does. And because they are amazed and because of these things that Philip does and the message that he's preaching, they believe in Jesus. Well, before that, Simon would do his magical sorcery. And so the people, with his magic, those people were amazed at what he did. And they, they called him, oh, he is the power of God. This Simon, he is so powerful. Simon thought he was pretty great too. He would go around telling people, I'm great. So Simon not only had everybody else saying, oh, Simon is the power of God. He said, yeah, I'm pretty great. But Simon, when he heard and saw what Philip was doing, Simon changed. Simon was amazed by what Philip did. Simon knew what he did was just magic and, and tricks. He knew what Philip was doing was real. And he was believed and was baptized just like the other Samaritans. Samaritans. So they no longer called him that. They no longer went around calling himself great anymore. And so instead of him doing all the wonderful things, now he starts following Philip, starts watching what he's doing. He's amazed, and still, he believes. Well, Jerusalem, the apostles from Jerusalem, they hear about what's going on in Samaria, and they are super happy. So they send Peter and John. Peter and John go from Jerusalem, where they are at, up to Samaria. When Peter and John get to Samaria, Samaria, they do something special for these people. So Peter and John lay their hands on the people, touch them, and give them the Holy Spirit. Well, Simon, the former sorcerer, sees Peter and John doing this for these people in Samaria. And he thinks, I want to be able to do that. That was pretty amazing. I want to do that. I want to have that power. And so Simon is excited. Simon says to Peter and John, you guys, I have money. You guys, please give me that power. I want to be able to do what you do. I want to be able to lay my hands on people, and I want to be able to give them the Holy Spirit too, just like you did. And Peter and John are not happy about this. He is Peter is not happy about this at all. And he says, what are you talking about? You can't buy this. You have got to repent. You do not have a right heart about this. Your heart is not right. This is not about power doing this. You have misunderstood, and you need to pray and ask for forgiveness, 
and pray for God to forgive you. And I can see in your heart, Simon, you are full of bitterness. Your heart is bitter. You are captive of sin. And he, Simon, is distraught. He says, oh, please, please, please pray for me. Don't let any of this happen to me. I don't want that to happen. Please, please. I don't want that to happen. That's the end of our story here. We don't know what happens with Simon after this story. Peter and John continue preaching before they go back to Jerusalem and spreading, spreading the word and telling the others about Jesus. We don't know what happens with Simon. But this story, this lesson that we have from Simon is very important. You have to believe not only with just your mind that Jesus is the Son of God, it has to penetrate your heart. It has to penetrate your being. It has to penetrate who you are and change you completely from who you were before to who you are now in Christ. It's a different person. You're completely changed. And Simon had not completely changed. Peter saw that his heart was not right. He was full of bitterness, captured by sin. But he also said, pray and have God forgive you. So we don't know what happens with Simon after that, but we do know that we need to have our belief of Jesus penetrate fully into our heart and into our soul and change who we are forever. If you have any questions about our lesson, this is the end. We'll hear more about Philip later. We'll hear about more about Peter and John. We'll hear more about Saul. Many things happen to Saul that he is going to be way, way, uh, he's not going to expect what's going to happen to him. But wonderful things are going to happen in Saul's life. And God is going to use him for good. He's already used him for good, even though he didn't know it, to start spreading the message of, out of Jerusalem. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Like I said, if you have any questions, just get in contact with us, and we'll answer those questions for you. And I miss you guys so much, and I can't wait to see you again. Bye!